Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I beat again. you reporting for the Media Speaks. As you can see, the high def is not up today. The entire studio is sort of getting a, uh, a New Year's makeover, if you will, and as such, certain devices are not able to be used. That does not mean that... Uh, I mean, basically, it doesn't mean that the news stops. It doesn't mean that the show stops. I keep going. And guys, I am furious. I don't know why. Uh, we talk about this on the media speaks. We're very open about it. We don't always agree on everything on the media speaks. I am a little more Israel than Palestine, and uh, certain members of our organization are slightly more Palestine than Israel. Israel, the, 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 the government, not the people. I don't mean anything about Arabs, I don't mean anything about Jews. The leadership of Israel proved themselves to be maggot-ridden pieces of filth for what they did. Listen to this. Now, I already know the Palestinians and Jews do not recognize Christmas. I'm not an idiot. However, to do this on Christmas Eve is a personal insult to the world. RT. UN condemns Christmas Eve demolitions of Palestinian homes by Israel. The UN Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA, for Palestinian refugees, has condemned Israel's demolition of Palestinian Bedouin dwellings in the West Bank, calling for an immediate halt. UNRWA <laughs> condemns the latest demolitions in the West Bank which displaced 68 people, the most recent of which occurred on Christmas Eve, spokesman Chris Gunness said in a statement. The demolitions, it says, took place in Ain Alb near Ramallah and Fasail al Wusta near Jericho in the Jordan Valley, with 61 persons displaced in Ain Yuab and seven persons, all refugees, displaced in Fasail al Wusta, Gunness said. He added that 32 of those displaced were children, including a five-year-old girl who was paralyzed from the waist down. You in Israel displaced a child who could not walk five years old on Christmas Eve. I don't care if you don't believe in Christ. You are scum. In addition, some 750 head of sheep and goats are without shelter at this critical lambing season, he said. I'm pretty sure Jewish law says something about respect your beast, doesn't it? Gunn has stated that at least 663 Palestinian buildings, including 259 homes, have been demolished, and 1,103 Palestinians have been displaced in the West Bank of East Jerusalem this year. A spokesman urged to obey international laws and halt demolitions. Israel maintains that it only dismantles buildings that were put up without permission, but Palestinians say they are almost never granted permits. I'll say this. There are many, many instances where Palestinians do not deserve to be given permits because they're bombing Jews for no reason. And I'm not afraid to say that on camera. However, a five-year-old girl? Uh-uh. You, you won't find me in favor of that. Israel, uh, excuse me, the UN has continuously spoken out against demolitions in the West Bank. Earlier in December, the United Nations decreed Israel's decision to destroy over two dozen Palestinian properties in the West Bank, issuing a statement accusing Israel of pushing the same Palestinian families out of their homes in less than two weeks. It says, moreover, dozens of NGOs have asked Israel not to continue the demolitions. 
Palestinian leaders maintain that resettlement efforts must cease if there is to be any chance of peace with Israel. Demolitions often occur to facilitate the expansion of illegal Israeli settlements, with 60% of demolitions occurring in Palestinian communities close to settlement zones. Well, maybe the Palestinians, in all honesty, wouldn't have so much trouble if they quit bombing Israel. Amnesty International Human Rights Watch, Oxfam, and other rights groups declared a joint settlement earlier in December. A joint statement. Now that I admitted that the Jewish leadership are scum, let's go on to the Islamic scum leadership. And this is exactly why I am in favor of us taking out of this region. Let's let these animal leaderships kill each other. I've had enough. This is from the uh, IsraeliNationalNews.com. Iranian lawmakers threaten to increase the uranium enrichment level. Now, how many times have we heard Iran give us this BS by the dumpster load that they are only wanting peaceful purposes? The Iranian government is made up of the same kind of lying pig scum that the Israeli government is made up of. In response to planned legislation by the United States senators to increase sanctions on Iran, lawmakers in the Islamic Republic of Scum have drafted a bill of their own to increase the country's level of uranium enrichment. Yes, because that's all the Iranian government ever does is lie because they are scum. Press TV reported on Wednesday that the bill would oblige the government to produce 60% enriched uranium. Yes, because they are lying Arabic scum. Do I mean the people? No, they are wonderful Arabic people. I mean their leaderships. Just like I meant about the Israeli leadership who displaced a paralyzed girl. Scum. The bill was signed by 100 legislators and presented to the Majesis, Iranian, which is the Iranian parliament, it says, on Wednesday, according to the report. If the bill is approved, the government will be obliged to complete nuclear infrastructure at Fordo and the Tans if sanctions against Iran are ratcheted up. New sanctions are imposed, the country's nuclear rights are violated, and the Islamic Republic of Iran's peaceful nuclear rights are ignored by members of the P5 plus 1. Iranian lawmaker idiot Saeed Amidi Musjavinejad was quoted as having said. Well, Mr. Scum and Iran, maybe I predicted you were going to have an earthquake there because you shouldn't build a nuclear power plant in an earthquake zone, as uh, Fukushima has proven to us. Of course, we know that it was not the tsunami that caused the meltdown. It was, in fact, the earthquake. You have had an earthquake exactly like I predicted you were going to have, didn't you, Iranian Scum? Government, not people. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to build it there because you're too stupid to be able to handle it. And because even if you were smart enough, an earthquake is going to create a nuclear meltdown. You're an idiot. The bill would oblige the government, it says, to put Iraq heavy water reactor into operation and enrich uranium up to 60% purity level, proving that they were lying. In order to provide fuel for submarine engines, if the sanctions are tightened and Iran's nuclear rights are ignored, he added, because they are lying skull. Senators in the United States are dissatisfied with the interim nuclear deal that was reached between Iran and Western powers have drafted a bill that would impose tougher sanctions on Tehran if it refuses to dismantle its contested nuclear program after the end of the six months negotiating period. It says the bill has already garnered support for a quarter of the Senate and could come to a vote next month. In response, the White House, oh God, we trust Obama, threatened last week to use its veto power against legislation that would impose new sanctions on Iran. Yeah, well, of course, Iran needs the right to melt down and kill all of its own people. That's just what Islamic leaders do, is kill their own people. Uh, clearly, in, in, in uh, Jewish leaders, uh, displace children who are unable to walk. Earlier this month, the United States blacklisted several companies that evaded the existing sanctions on Iran. I think their leadership should go to hell. 
The news evoked outrage from Tehran, which attacked the move because they're lying scum, claiming the U.S. violated terms of the interim deal and accusing Washington of taking orders from radical Zionist lobbies. No, you lied about how much you were going to enrich the uranium. And in this one instance, and maybe this one instance only, if President Obama kicks your ass, I may just support him in it! Uh, PrisonPlanet.com, Kurt Nemo, South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley gets a gun for Christmas to, dis to the dismay of liberals. When did liberalism end up such a cuss word? I mean, I used to consider myself a liberal, like a, a, a classic liberal. This, this BS we're getting here has made me realize that I'm actually a libertarian. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley received a handgun from her husband this Christmas. Oh, devil of devils. On the Lib blogosphere, blogosphere, which is usually made up of brain-dead idiots, and news sites, clearly brain-dead idiots, this is considered somehow newsworthy. Millions of Americans have received firearms as Christmas presents uh, currently and in the past. Good. We should all be thankful that more or less the part of the Bill of Rights still works for now. It says on social media some libs went bonkers. I will say a prayer for the family read one message from an idiot insinuating that the families of gun owners are at risk when the Second Amendment is practiced. That's not true and the armed, polite, armed society is in fact a polite society. Uh, Democrats believe simply owning a handgun is some kind of political or tactic. Of course, they do their brain dead. Everything is about politics with her. Everything. State Democratic Party Director Amanda Loveday tweeted, according to the state. One lib idiot was so disturbed she tweeted about the tragedy of South Carolina's respect for the Second Amendment. South Carolina Governor Nick Haley thinks guns are fun toys. She never once said that. South Carolina residents have no requirements for gun ownership. That isn't true. Pitiful? No, the only thing pitiful is you. Why do I say that? I'll tell you why. Because guns save lives. Ah, more than they kill lives. WashingtonExaminer.com Be prepared. Wall Street Advisor recommends guns, ammo for protection in collapse. Paul uh, Bedard. A top, econ a top financial advisor worried that Obamacare, the NSA spying scandal, and spiraling national debt is increasing the chances for a fiscal and social disaster, is recommending that Americans prepare a bug out bag that includes food, a gun, and ammo to help them stay alive. Wonderful advice. I support it fully. David John Murata. A Wall Street expert and financial advisor and Forbes contributor, for those of you that think I have no sources, said in a note to investors, firearms are the best item on the, are the, are the last item on the list, and they are in fact on the list. There are some terrible people in this world, and you are safer when you are trusted, when you have trust, your trusted neighbors have firearms. Very tiny, tiny type on the screen. His memo is part of a series addressing the potential for a financial apocalypse. His view, however, is that the problems plaguing the country won't result in Armageddon. I'm not going to read the whole thing. People, basically, this guy is saying it's not going to be the end of the world when the uh, economy tanks out this time. However, it is going to be a lot worse than most people think it's going to be. And the best defense that you can have against it is to be armed, and I agree. Guys, do me a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud Cade. I need you to do it in that order. And the reason I need you to do it in that order is when you do, it helps us. And you'll be able to find some amazing things. I bought Christmas gifts for my family from Bud Cade. And as soon as they arrive in the mail, I will let you know what they are. But I'll let you know they are going to love them. Do you know anybody that enjoys interesting things that you wouldn't normally expect? How about a remote-controlled RC amphibious tank green? $39.99, that's 50 bucks anywhere else, people. There, there is the Shinwa Damascus Katana Purple. Now, I've taken martial arts. Listen to this deal. $169.99. Nope, they got it for $99.98. 99. 
How about something cheaper? The War Hunter's Sawback Blade Machete and Sheath, twelve ninety nine, less than fifteen bucks. Friends, go to themediaspeaks.com, click on Bud K, and enjoy the wonderful products you get from them. Also, might I add, if you are in Canton, Ohio, make sure, absolutely, positively, no questions asked, kind of sure, you go to the Arcadia Grill. It's located on Court Avenue. It's in Canton, Ohio. Meatballs as big as your freaking head. They've got a full bar. Everything you get at the Arcadia Grill, you will love. So go to Court Avenue in Canton, Ohio. Go to the Arcadia Grill and let them know that Sam from the Correct View sent you. All right, guys, two more articles I want to get to. Guns.com. Dunce of the day. A burglar calls 9-11 after getting shot by a homeowner. An early morning attempted burglary didn't go quite as planned when the suspect ended up calling 911 after being shot by the owner of the Toledo home he had broken into Thursday morning, dated 12-11-13. So, uh, guns are all bad, right? Liberal crybabies, all right, let's hear about how bad they are. The homeowner, 34-year-old Antoine Garrett, and his girlfriend were awakened by the sound of glass shattering just before 5 a.m., according to a report by Toledo News Now. Garrett described the frightening situation as being like something from out of a movie as he walked downstairs to find a man crawling through the front window of his home. However, it says, Grant was armed with a handgun and fired several shots at the intruder who was later identified by police as 21-year-old Randy Estrada. Good job, Randy. Too bad you got shot because you're a moron. Stay out of people's houses that are not your own. Estrada quickly escaped back out the window from which he had entered and ran away. He's lucky he still had his head on his shoulders. Minutes later, at 5.21 a.m., Estrada called 911 to report that he had just been shot. The man claimed that he was shot while walking down the street, but moments prior to Estrada calling 911, Garrett had already reported the break-in and explained to police that he fired several shots at the intruder. It is unknown whether Garrett knew at the point that he had been struck by Estrada while it sucks to be him. Paramedics arrived at Estrada's home and transported him to a nearby hospital to receive treatment for the gunshot wound, which he deserved. He has since been released from the hospital, arrested, and charged with burglary, as he should be. Garrett and his girlfriend were not injured during the incident. There are no no charges are expected to be fired against filed against them, nor should they be. If someone's breaking into your house, it says, and you fear for your safety, remember to say that when the police ask, you have the right to defend yourself and your family. And in this case, that's what we believe Mr. Garrett has done, because he did. Said Sergeant Jeff Hefferman with the Toledo Police Department. You get the anti dunce cap of the month. Uh, according to Ohio state law, which is good, a person has no duty to retreat before using force in self-defense. Amen to that. Meaning Garrett was most likely justified when he shot Estrada, and I'm glad the guy lived, but he deserved to be shot. Uh, TechDirt.com, last thing I'm going to get to from Mike Masnick. Chicago law professor claims no privacy in your emails as long as the content isn't used to detain or harass you. I guess he never gets sick of being wrong. Eric Posner, who somehow was a law professor in Chicago and a full-blown supporter of extreme authoritarian governments, that's remember Hitler was elected, He's even written a book about why the U.S. presidency needs more power, people said that about Hitler, and less respect for constitutional separation of powers, also said by Hitler, is not surprisingly a big fan of the NSA's surveillance efforts. In the past, he's mocked Snowden and Manning, who you know is our heroes, and talked up why a government that keeps secrets is better than one that's actually accountable to the public, a perfect fascist. In other words, he's the perfect stooge to try to come up with a justification for Mike Rogers' ridiculous claims that your privacy isn't violated if you don't know about it. Of course not. That's a logical statement if you have a pumpkin for a head. His latest article isn't directly a justification of that statement. In fact, it doesn't even mention it. But it's clearly cut from the same cloth. 
from cloth made from poison ivy fibers. He makes the argument that the NSA should keep spying on all foreigners, in part because they spy on us, and because he thinks we're good at it. However, he also has a rather unique interpretation to privacy. Quote, stupidity incoming. Mass surveillance, where emails and other communications are vacuumed up, stored in databases, and then searched for keywords, doesn't harm anyone in itself. The problem only arises when the information is used to detain, interrogate, or harass people. Well, maybe you're doing something that you don't want anybody else to know, including the NSA member who read it. I just proved you wrong in three seconds. He's using this bizarre and laughable line of argument to suggest that it's okay when governments spy on citizens in other countries because their intelligence agents do not have the time or inclination to harass random Americans, nor the capability as long as Americans remain in the United States. So in his mind, no privacy violation happens. He doubles down, and that's hard to believe, on this thinking later, arguing again that if there's no known harm to the individual, there's no privacy issue at all. That's because he has a pumpkin for a head. Suppose that the NSA collects the emails of foreigners and conducts searches of them for keywords. Occasionally, a false positive turns up and an analysis reads someone's email to his lover, therapist, or doctor ascertains that the email contains no information that identifies terrorists or other security threats and deletes it. Right there. It's an automatic breach, but I'm going to go on. The writer of the email never finds out, and the analyst, of course, has no idea who the person is. Has a human right been violated? It is hard to identify an affront to human dignity or even harm any more than if a police officer overhears a snatch of personal conversation on a bus. Of course, uh, how hard it says is it to reward that paragraph just reword that paragraph just slightly to demonstrate the insanity of Posner's claim. Great paragraph incoming. Suppose that some hackers collect the emails of Eric Posner, the idiot that said this, and conduct searches of them for keywords. Occasionally, a really embarrassing one turns up. And the hacker reads about Posner's sexual proclivities, financial difficulties, medical problems, or other similar such things. Ascertains that the email contains no information that identifies crimes that Posner is planning to commit or deletes it. Or, or maybe he saves it for use at a later date, or to share with a friend, or a lot of friends. Posner never finds out. And even though the hacker knows who Posner is, He'll never see him in person. Has a human right, it says, been violated? It is hard to identify an affront to human dignity or even harm any more than if a police officer overhears Eric Posner talking on a bus. Two paragraphs, and I'm going to read them the left. Posner's basic assumption is flat out crazy. Amen. God bless. He's arguing that there's no privacy violation until something bad happened with the information. Not when it is seized, and not when, even when it is pursued by human eyes, but only when something nebulously bad happens with it. That makes no sense. The violation it comes much earlier. There is real harm in having your information exposed, even if you don't know about it. Very true. Beyond the fact that Posner is simply wrong about when the privacy violation occurs, even if we accept this wacky argument, he's still wrong. That's because he's making two giant assumptions. First, that such information isn't abused. He pretends that national borders protect spying on foreigners because they can't do something legally to a person in another country. I would imagine, it says, that people killed in the U.S. drone strikes might disagree with that assessment. He also argues that it's unlikely that there would be many abuses in this information because any abuses would harm the spying country and its spies once they came out. Pretty much all civilized human history suggests that's wrong, exactly because it is. Give people power, as Posner is aching to do, and they will abuse it. That's a correct view. Over and over again. But I guess he's okay with that, just as long as he never finds out about it. Dictatorships and ignorance.
our bliss. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks and signing off. Do me a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. Please donate to the show if you can at TheCorrectViews at Hotmail.com. Good night, my friends. God bless, and thank you for listening to this show. Do me a favor and share it.